guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're visiting or here for the first time, my name is Zanella. So we speak a lot around machinery and machinery safety and engineering. But why is machinery safety so important? Needless to say, the many different types of way that a person can get injured are significant. Not only can they be property damage and loss to the business, but loss of life cannot be replaced. Any part or function or process of a machine can cause injury and harm to an individual. So that's why it's important that these are safeguarded as far as reasonably practicable. Obviously, we know that it's not always practical or practicable for a piece of equipment to be operated within a box. There are developments in technology and there are developments even in machinery design such that individuals don't have to come into contact for a particular machine to be operated. However, it's going to take several years for that to be cascaded and rolled out across facilities across the world. In the interim, it is important that machinery safety or safety of machines is prioritized to minimize the exposure to individuals or for individuals getting injured. Machinery safety is important because an individual can get stuck, trapped, or drawn in by rollers, belts, and pulley drives. A person can get cuts or lacerations and stabbed by sharp edges and sharp points. Surfaces can cause friction, resulting in abrasion or skin being scraped off. A person can be crushed between moving parts of a machine, or they can be crushed between a machine, moving machine, and a hard surface, example, a wall person can get burnt. They can even get burnt by emitting liquids such as steam, such as chemicals. All of these things can happen due to machinery and also due to lack of training, malfunctioning of machines, lack of maintenance of machines. So this is why it's important that machinery safety is prioritized. That is why it's also stipulated under general machinery regulations that safeguarding of machines is essential and critical. So under general machinery regulations three, the requirements that an employer or a business should put in place for safeguarding of machines are stipulated. So one of the first thing that the law says is that an employer needs to make sure that whatever machine or equipment is installed, used, operated and maintained is used for the purpose that it was installed for. So if a piece of equipment, let's say a steam generating equipment, so a boiler, let's say a boiler is installed for the purpose of boiling water to a certain temperature. If that is installed for that purpose and must be operated for the purpose and must be maintained so that it does that particular operation that is used in the correct way. As opposed to if mixers in a processing plant then fail, then you make shift and modify a particular piece of equipment without it having checked and tested for what it is intended for. Instead of making soups in your mixer and you make and mix your soups in this boiler that might cause injury. So it is important that machines and the pieces of equipment are maintained to such an extent that they don't expose or cause injury to individuals that are using it, around it, or operating it. The next thing that the law says is that insulation, fencing, screening, guarding should be used to protect an individual from getting injured by a moving machine. So if a machine has moving parts such that a person can, within reaching length, reach those moving parts, they should be safeguarded and protected against those by those means that I've just mentioned. Unless there's written permission from the inspector that such guarding, or it is okay to operate with such guarding within your facility or operation, you must ensure that your facility safeguards people from getting injured. It's also important that safety equipment is used in the correct way and is kept in good working condition, not only by the employer, but also by the employees using that equipment as well. One simple example can be padlocks that are used for lockout, tagout. They are there for the purpose of locking out and tagging out and isolating energy from machines for individuals to work on machines. In some circumstances, you may find employees or individuals using those locks for personal use them outside of the intended use that they're there for. This must be avoided by all means and all safety equipment must be used for the purpose that they're there for. One of the things that the law says is that the material used, the quality of the material used, and also the construction of materials is satisfactory important because different materials have different properties so the construction of material must be suitable for the intended purpose so you may find that some metals are more malleable than others or have a lower melting point so they may not be sufficient for certain conditions so it is important that the right material of construction is used and the right quality of materials are used to safeguard from injuries if at any point a piece of equipment or a machine or an area is deemed to be unsafe and is exposing individuals to danger, it's important, also stipulated in the law, that that particular area is enclosed and locked and people are kept away from that particular place until that danger is removed. And under no circumstance is a person who's not authorized to remove safety equipment or equipment that's there or barricade or barrier that's there to keep people safe 
they cannot remove it because the next person and the next person may not know that this place is actually isolated or no one is meant to go into a particular area. Even with safety equipment, so fire hydrants, as I mentioned, I made an example with the lockouts and the locks for lotto. Individuals who are not authorized to do so should not. You guys can check out one of my videos on the duty of employers and the duty of employees as stipulated in the Occupational Health and Safety Act in regards to safety. So everyone's got a role to play. So for the reasons that I've mentioned and more, it is important that not only engineers, but also members of operations, quality, safety, planning, procurement, anyone who comes into a facility where there are machines, bear in mind, keep an eye out of some of the dangers that are present because at any given time, a person can get injured if the right processes and procedures are not followed and if the equipment does not maintain to the satisfactory levels of keeping individuals safe. Maybe share your experiences. Let us know in the comments below. What are some of the injuries and accidents that you've seen that could have been prevented, that you've experienced in your workplace or in formal workplaces or that you've heard of or been exposed to? Remember, each of us have a role to play in keeping ourselves and everyone else around us safe. So do play your part as well. Remember to live your best life. Learn as you grow and lead for change. Be a positive influence. Shop.